she makes anyone who meets her love her. I mean, she's so lovable. How can you not? I'd just say she's super strong, like such a strong, sweet, caring person. She's always fun. She loves to be the center. She loves to be a part of the group. Her imagination is incredible. She likes mermaids. <laughs> likes it. Everyone has to know that she likes mermaids. Yeah, that's true. Looking for my mermaid friend. You have to watch your mermaid friend. She has no mean bone in her body. Yeah. She's just very loving. And I think everyone can learn from that. <laughs> When I was pregnant with her, I was a labor and delivery nurse at the time. I remember someone saying to me one time, talking about someone else who had um, a child with some disorder, I just started crying. I just started crying. And I was like, I hope my baby's healthy. A couple of days before she was born, I sat her older sister Haley down outside on the sidewalk. She was four. I said, baby girl, your life is about to really change. And I had no idea how much, though. The doctors at the PICU she was at wouldn't tell us anything because they didn't know. And in order to diagnose MMA at the time, you had to do a skin biopsy, send it to Canada, and it could take about six months to get a true diagnosis. That was such a powerless feeling. Am I gonna be able to take my baby home? So the doctors convened with each other and, and they, they came in and said, she may have two to four years. My husband was at work at the time. So we got to the hospital that night. We went out to this little fountain area they had and I just said, we're going to lose our baby in a couple of years. And that was a really, really hard seeing it on his face. When they we got the biopsy back about, she was about five months old, it ended up being the worst type, um, which is mutt zero. She has no enzyme to break down proteins, certain proteins that are essential for life but yet her body turned it into acid. It affects everything in her body. She needs special feeding and, and a lot of really close care because she's really on a fine line of tipping from being healthy to sick at all times. The first couple of years, there were so many hospitalizations. I was one of those people that with Ayla, I thought if she's got to go through it, then I, I can be here and go through it with her. So I didn't give myself breaks. I was at the hospital all the time and my four-year-old daughter was at home and I remember thinking, I can't remember what it feels like to have her against my skin. I don't know why, but when she was born, I also felt like a caretaker of her, even though I was so young. And so I only really wanted her to be taken care of. That was also my focus as a kid too. I feel like we always live on, just with the thought in our head that, at any point, something can happen. She is sick. And although we're healthy right now, it doesn't stay that way. It, it won't. But it is our lives, and it is what we're going to do. One time, we were in um, NIH, and I was 10. She got so sick. And she just had all of these tubes down her throat, all these things, and how she looked laying there. Like, lifeless, but not you know, stable, but in my eyes, I couldn't understand. And I did have to get flown back home early. I, I couldn't handle it. 
Well, the problem is they wanted to scare me with an IV, but they had to put me um they had to give me IV because that's what they do, and I I was really scared. But it's okay. Sometimes it it's just I need to be be brave. Otherwise, they can't feed me. So so. Of course, I don't want her to go through the things that she goes through, and I wish that it could be different, but it isn't, and it's just how it is. And she's amazing, and she is a blessing to our family, and we're so lucky to have her. It is hard, and I think that anyone else who lives with a chronic, sick, ill family member would agree with me that it is hard, and this is what we live with, but that we we wouldn't change it. We wouldn't want her to change. I want to say even maybe this summer, uh, Melanie and Ayla are going back to NIH again to continue their longitudinal study. We're also on um, some side studies that uh, we're volunteering for. A lot of this can't help us, per se but it's somebody else is going to benefit from it. There won't be children that have to go through this now. I don't care how positive you are, but there's gonna be days where you, you, you are scared and don't have a lot of hope. It's the people that are working on finding a treatment that are doing the research on it. Then at the end of the day, there, you know, there are hope. Even if it's not something that we get, um, I have hope for the other babies that are going to be born with this. I have, I have hope because of them. You just a little caretaker too, huh? Hi. Then it's happy cry now. Happy cry is good. All crying is good, but happy cry is fun. I have two MMA. Yes, you have two MMA jeans, huh, baby? <laughs>